Thank you guys for tuning into my channel. I am so excited because this video is the Ruth Bible Study Week 1 video. Yay! It is my first Bible study and I'm very excited to be hosting it with you guys. Um, if you haven't already, I'm going to leave a link down below to the devotional um, that I just wrote. It's called the Diva Diaries Devotionals, Ruth in the Right Field. And this is what we will be using along with, of course, the, the Bible um, to get into Ruth and um, learn a little bit about her life and what we can learn from her relationship with Boaz and how we can apply that to relationships now. So if that's something that interests you, please keep watching and let's get into the Word of God. Feel free to pause this video at any time so that you can go through and answer the questions if you haven't already uh, for week one that's in the devotional. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Euphrathites from Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. And that's the word of the Lord, Ruth chapter 1. So let's get into this and see what we can glean from this chapter. So this chapter starts with 
us meeting Naomi. Naomi is Ruth's mother-in-law. Naomi moved with her sons and her husband to Moab to avoid the famine. And in doing that, she en ended up losing her uh, husband and her two sons. And it was just her and her daughter-in-laws left. Uh, she had two, one Orpa and one Ruth, as we learned in the uh, chapter. And Ruth is the one that decided to go back to Bethlehem with Naomi. Ruth is, is somebody that we would describe as a covenant partner to Naomi. And a covenant partner is, um, I'm going to use a Van Moody quote because I love, I love the way he describes it. A covenant partner is mature in faith and will remind you that God is faithful, that his word is true, and that he never, ever fails. That type of person is also a person that can be with you through thick and thin times. In this case, um, looking at Ruth and Naomi, Ruth, I mean, she could have returned to Moab or stayed in Moab with her people and her gods and um, an area that she was comfortable with. But she chose to go with Naomi because she felt like her destiny uh, was tied to where Naomi was going and, and being in connection with Naomi. So Ruth decided to go. What's key about that is that in this, Ruth was leaving back the familiar for the unfamiliar. She was um, deciding to be connected to somebody who she really no longer needed to be connected to. Their connection was mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. And by all, you know, technically, because the, the sons had died, there was no connection anymore. But a covenant partner is somebody who can be with you even if there seems to be no connection because there is one. Because they've chosen to, to be with you through the thick and thin times. So that's the first thing. Ruth is a covenant partner to Naomi. And that we're going to see later in some of the other Bible studies is very key to um, Ruth's destiny. And also it blesses Naomi. What you'll notice is that when Ruth and Naomi returned to Bethlehem and all the townspeople were like, hey, is that, that's Naomi? Hey, hey, Naomi, hey, girl, hey. Naomi said to them, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. Now, why this is key is that Naomi means pleasantness. Pleasant. And Mara means bitter. So because of her losses in Moab, her losing her son and her husband, her sons and her husband, she decides that she is going to change her name to Mara, to bitter because her situation was bitter. She's changing her name to bitter. Now, if we'll be honest with each other, because it's just me and you, we've done that. We've done it. Sure, maybe I didn't change my name from Crystal Marie to Ashley or something like that, but I have definitely changed my outlook maybe didn't have as much faith as I should have. I felt like in certain situations that, that um, it wasn't even worth living anymore because of that situation. Certain situations that I've been in, I've let define who I am and in a sense change my identity because the situation was so rough. Now, God did not take me to a situation so that he wouldn't bring me through it. He took me to that situation or put me in a situation or let me or allowed me to be in situations that I put myself in because he wanted me to learn a lesson from them. And when I was a bit weaker, I didn't, I didn't pay attention necessarily to the lesson. I was so distraught about the situation that I almost changed my name, that I did change my name. I let that situation tell me that I wasn't worthy. I let that situation tell me that it wasn't worth living anymore. 
I let that situation change who I was and and took on a new identity of a negative self-worth because of situations that I've been in. And if we're honest with each other, you may have had the same uh, the same experience. But now that we have read this, now that we can draw from Ruth and Naomi and what, what we can learn and how we can be better, what we need to realize is that there's no reason for us to change our names because of a tough situation. If God took something from you, he can definitely restore you and restore you much more than what he took from you. We just have to keep the faith and learn the lesson from the situations that we're in. So no longer feel like you need to change your name to Mara. You are still pleasant in your situation. You are still worthy in your situation. God is still got his hand on you. He is still there. Even if you don't feel him, realize that he is still there and he is still God. He is still the faithful God that, that brought you into this world. He is the faithful God that will carry you through your situation. There is no reason for us at this point now to change our names tomorrow. Always remember that when God takes you to a situation or through a situation, it's to make you better, not to make you bitter. Okay, loves, let's get creative with the word. Visit thedivainc.com forward slash Ruth study and click on the week one resources where you're going to download this handy little sheet and we're going to illustrate the word. Hopefully you downloaded your Illustrate the Word worksheet from my website. Now let's go ahead and use it to get creative with the word. We're going to pick a line out of Ruth chapter one that um, speaks to you. So any, any verse, um, any line, any sentence, or if it's just a word like say covenant, maybe you want to illustrate that. Let's pick something that's memorable about our week one study and let's get into illustrating the word and have fun doing this. You can use whatever tools that you have. You can use watercolor, um, pencils, colored pencils, markers, washi tape. Just get into the word and think of this as another act of worship.
Thank you guys for watching and being a part of my first week, my first time doing a Bible study. Thank you for letting me operate in my gifts and I pray that it blessed you as much as it's blessed me. And I pray that you got something out of it that you're going to take with you and kind of change your behaviors on some things. Um, I pray that you understand that no matter what situation you're going through, you are still worthy. God deemed you worthy. He died for you on the cross so that you could have life and have life more abundantly. So please do not feel like you have to change your name because of a rough situation. Please keep your name as Naomi because it's pleasant and don't worry about those bitter situations. Just grab the lesson out of it and keep moving. Um, I love you guys and I thank you guys for tuning in.